Hello everyone and welcome to another video from Carl's Tech Shed. Well as I showed you yesterday I picked up this uh, alarm charge hub along with a load of other stuff from a computer recycling company and uh, af after I had a look uh, on Google as to what it could be uh, I had a look in the comments section on my other video and it turns out that someone did correctly guess what it was um, it is actually an alarm system for a retail location so when you go into a shop and you start looking at new laptops or new mobile phones and the moment you go near it the alarms start going off uh, this is the box which makes all the noise and decides that uh, it wants to uh, set an alarm off and accuse you of being a shoplifter so um, what this basically does is you've got a series of these uh, little adhesive tags which would be on the end of a cable which would then plug into one of these RJ11 jacks. So this is a very simple uh, break to make circuit. So as soon as the circuit is broken it then makes the circuit and sets off the alarm. Now I've had a look around this and uh, there's only three ports on the back of this. So we've got a 12 volt input here We've got an RS-232 serial port, um, which is probably just used for diagnostics and configuration, although it may have uh, a, an RS-485 switch um, on, the, on the firmware so that you would be able to connect this up to uh, a more permanent alarm system so that you could record um, data as to whenever this, this, act, this uh, alarm is triggered. Um, and obviously we've just got a normal IEC 230 volt mains input. Um, now there's no, there's no actual way to switch this off um, from the outside, there's no button or, or pin pad or anything like that. So I looked this up on, on uh, the website of the manufacturer and uh, you actually require a small key fob um, to deactivate this wirelessly uh, just over a small RF uh, frequency. So that's, that's how it's deactivated. Um, so hopefully when we open this up we'll, uh, we'll find some interesting components inside. Okay, well, uh, inside of this, the uh, the actual board layout doesn't look too bad, but it seems that there's a couple of boards just sort of moving around in the bottom which aren't secured in place, which is quite a bad design feature if you ask me. Now, there's a couple of microcontrollers here. You can see that they've been marked A and B. Uh, these are NXP microcontrollers. They're basically an 8051 microcontroller with a built-in uh, ADC. So this would be for converting the uh, alarm input here into a digital signal, which could then be recorded and used um, to trigger the alarm. We've got a couple of I.O. expanders here, um, we've got a small shift register, um, this small IC down here, this is just a, uh, an RS-232 controller, so this has no RS-485 capability, so uh, my speculation on that was incorrect. Um, We've got a pair of these small pin headers here. Now I'm not sure which, which sort of protocol these would use, but judging by the location of these, these are obviously for initial configuration uh, of the microcontrollers. Apart from that, there's not really much on here. We've got a small relay down here and uh, a voltage regulator here and a series of these bicolor LEDs up the top here. Uh, each of these has its own capacitor, resistor and a series of small passive components. Now on the front here, we've got all of these RJ11 connectors. Um, these are not any uh, specific um, industry standard pinout. These would be a proprietary pinout for the um, for the alarm system. So uh, these would then connect into this small uh, group of passive components here. This would then feed the signal back via the um, break to make circuit and then this would f feed this back to the microcontroller which would then uh, light up which LED um, is, is adjacent to the connector to show which alarm has been triggered so then the alarm can then be investigated, replaced and then the system can be reactivated. Now as I said before um, this system is actually designed to be deactivated wirelessly uh, with a small key fob so I had a look on here and I found this board which is moving around in the bottom uh, this is actually the wireless board so I'm going to pull this out and let you have a look at it well this is the wireless controller board, as you can see it just has a standard RF controller IC on here, small trim pot, single resistor and uh, there's a small op amp and a few passive components on the back. So this is just a standard off the shelf part which they've chosen for this application. If you actually google this part number, which I'll give a link to in the description, um, 
all of the links on Google just tend to come up with a board for an Arduino. So this is obviously an off-the-shelf part which has uh, many uses and one of those would be for an Arduino. So it's, uh, it's unusual that they would not secure this in place properly because when I had a look at the small bracket that they've put it on, uh, this board was actually sitting in this small plastic cage and then there's this small adhesive pad on the back. Now it's a little bit tacky but it certainly isn't, it doesn't have as much adhesive on it as you'd need to, um, to secure of this in place because let's say for example this piece of equipment is running in a retail location and um, because of the poor design of this uh, through some poor twist of fate this board starts moving around and it becomes disconnected or shorted out to the metal casing um, that then means that you're not going to be able to disable the um, the alarm because it's wirelessly controlled so without this board you're not going to be able to silence it so um, that could be quite uh, it's, it's quite a bad design feature for them not to um, not to screw that down properly because it'd be such a cheap thing to do and you know virtually no additional cost and yet they've chosen just to use a sticky pad to, to save a few pence which in a piece of equipment like this it's not a very good thing to do. And the other piece of equipment which was just moving around with no serious attachment to the chassis uh, was the actual alarm. So on here we've just got what looks to be like a 555 timer, a transistor and a few basic through hole components, nothing special there really. Um, but again that, that wasn't really secured to the, uh, to the chassis in any way, there was just a glue pad which was very poor quality and had obviously deteriorated over time. And finally we've just got the modular power supply over here. So this is just an off the shelf part which they've chosen for this application. Um, unlike some power supplies like this, this, this just has a single 12 volt output um, rather than a 5 and a 12 volt. So then the, the 12 volt at DC feed is then fed into the board and then the voltage regulator will step that down to 5 volts and 3.3 volts respectively. So um, the reason they've put this this modular power supply in rather than uh, building their own power supply and having that on a board is because these alarms are, are designed to be left on 24 hours a day so if one of these power supplies decides to fail you need to be able to swap these out quickly so um, having a couple of these spare in a, in a warehouse is, is probably the best course of action to have because when that fails you can just swap it out and uh, the system is going to be back up and running so in order to change this out you've just got a couple of screws on the bottom and you'll notice there's no soldering required all of these uh, cables are just on screw terminals so it's very easy to replace um, and these are relatively cheap compared to buying a whole new alarm system. Well thank you very much for watching this video, uh, I'm going to try and get some more of this stuff torn down over the next few days.